All right, gang. Here we are with our logic analyzer um, step. We finally got a working clock generator, it looks like. Uh, I think. We'll see. So I have the uh, half hertz clock from the AVR coming in, or about five hertz clock coming in on uh, a clock input pin here. The uh, XEM button over here is debounced so that we can select which clock we want to look at of the eight. The red LED on you, on the left of the video is the uh, DCM locked component. And so now we will start with the 200 megahertz clock because it's the most interesting. It's this one. The yellow line is our output clock. Uh, the blue line is actually that um, input clock, the 5 hertz clock. The, uh, I've put this on, a, on an average now to clean it up a little bit. We can see that the peak-to-peak uh, -peak on this is only about a, is a little less than a volt. I'm going to chalk that up for now to uh, poor termination because this is a really lousy way to terminate a, a 200 megahertz signal especially with a track length that's probably, I don't know, two or three inches long in there. Uh, ugly, 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 don't do high frequency this way. The, uh, but we're measuring here at 190 some odd megahertz, 200 megahertz. I've done the math, that is almost exactly a 200 megahertz signal. So that's doing sort of what I expected to do. So now let's go over here and look at our input signal and let's slow things way down there we go so that's an average let's take it off of averaging mode so we can see all the ugliness here and here we have an approximately 5 hertz signal and let me bring my trigger level up a little bit. There we go. So there's our external clock ticking along at 5 hertz. Now let's go to our first clock and this is not it. This is uh, Mr. Nyquist having fun at our expense because this first clock... Oh, something I wanted to show. I found it kind of interesting that um, the phase of our clock seems to match up pretty well with the external clock. So there's very little delay there uh, between the two. We can stretch them out a little bit, make them look really ugly. And there we can see what the input clock looks like up close, sort of. Uh, there we go, let's bring that down to a reasonable level in the overshoots. So now let's take this to there's all sorts of fun things that go on here. Let's take this to step one and that ain't it. That's Mr. Nyquist having some fun at our expense because this is a one megahertz clock there we go. So there's our one megahertz clock. Now I press the button again. And now we have our five megahertz clock right at five megahertz. A little more ringing. Now let's hit it again. And there's our 10 megahertz clock. And there's our 20 megahertz clock. Getting uglier as we go along. 50 megahertz clock. Yummy, yummy, yummy. Bad termination. Makes me sick to my tummy. Uh, here's the 100 megahertz clock. And not only are we getting overshoot, but we're getting undershoot. Notice this is 3.3 volt logic, but I'm seeing 2, 4, almost 5 volts out and almost 
more than a volt negative swing because of the bad termination. So this is something else you got to be careful of. Another reason why terminating is important because you can burn things up if you don't terminate right. Hopefully this thing's a little bit ro more robust than uh, some other things I've dealt with in the past. And then back to the 200 megahertz clock, which is showing it only about a volt, uh, two volts at the peak. Uh, so I will assume it'll all work on the FPGA for now. Um, I'm holding the option in my pocket to back off from some of these things if I need to, but that's where we're at today. We have what looks like a working clock generator that we can change the value. Bye all.